Um, and I am uh, very happy to be here. Matt has done the majority of the organizing on this, and I'm thrilled that um, we've done this, and I hope this is something that we can repeat um, in years to come. The internship, the embedded internship program that we have in Wake County is relatively new, and so uh, we are anxious. It's been growing in the last year and a half, two years that we've had it, and um, I'm very happy to have these um, highly qualified um, graduate students with us, and I want them to actually go ahead and do their introduction, so I'm going to ask you all just to briefly um, introduce yourself and then describe the project that you're on, and we can start, um, we'll start at the far end with one of Hello everyone, um, my name is Juanita Hicks. I am a third year doc student at UNCG in the ERM, so Educational Research Methodology Department. Um, I'm new to the Guilford County School District because I started in early September. Um, I don't have like a main project yet. I'm on a few different things. Um, so I guess just to make more sense of what I do, my role is kind of like a data analyst, psychometrician, statistician, and evaluator. <laughs> kind of a little bit of a bit. <laughs> Whatever project is going on that they need help with, um, then I'm there. My name is Beth Adams, and I am a fourth year PhD student with um, at NC State in the Educational Evaluation and Policy Analysis K-12 program. And I did my internship in fall of 2014, and I worked with Pauline on an evaluation of an early literacy program called Letterland, where we propensities were matched um, students in Wake County to students in another school district and looked at kindergarten students' outcomes on um, literacy assessments. Um, we also had a longitudinal component um, and an implementation component to the evaluation as well. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Martin. I'm a fifth year uh, in the social psychology PhD program at Duke University. Um, so not, not actually from an education background. Um, and I did an internship over the summer working with Colleen in, in Wake County. And we were looking at the alternative learning centers in Wake County Middle and High Schools. And basically the alternative learning centers are learning environments where students who are at risk for short-term suspension can go to work on their um, academic and behavioral challenges. Um, so yeah. Hi, I'm Kirsten Aleman. I'm a fourth year at NC State as well. I'm in the Education Research and Policy Analysis Program. And I just completed my internship this past summer. And I was actually picking up on the evaluation that Beth described, where we're now looking at third grade outcomes. So those cohorts of students that Beth looked at initially, I'm now picking up to see after the students have participated in the Letterland program, how do they compare to other third grade students. So what I want you um, all to next um, inform us about is your motivation. So how did you get to working in a district? What made it motivating for that? Well, I, uh, I will be honest um, and say that at first I was not sure if I would be able to have the time to commit to an internship. Dr. Porter is my advisor and he initially approached me about the opportunity in the summer of 2014. Um, and I was hesitant, um, but after meeting with Colleen and hearing um, that there would be a contract and that the opportunity would be structured around a specific project where I wouldn't be collecting any data, I would be starting data analysis and seeing a specific part of the larger evaluation all the way through, um, I got really excited about that, especially as a former teacher, um, the opportunity to evaluate um, an elementary program. Um, and then also, the second thing that I wanted to say is, um, through talking to Colleen in that initial meeting over the summer, um, I started to see that the classes that I was taking that semester would align really well with what I would be doing in the evaluation. So I was taking Dr. Porter's quasi-experimental um, methodology class. And so I would learn about overlap um, with treatment and control and balance for treatment and control with propensity scores. And then I would go and meet with Colleen and then we would do the same um, same and she would thing. teach me. <laughs> In an applied setting. So that was really exciting. And that got me really excited. I was going to say, um, for me, what motivated um, 
me to, to do this is I'm friends with Beth and so she was always raving about this experience and I also had um, Colleen, I called her Dr. Papalo, because <laughs> um, she was my Quant 1 teacher and so being able to connect best positive experience working at the district with, um, with a professor that I had really made this a, a good idea. So I'm glad that I did this. Yeah, and um, for me, I, like I said, I'm in the psychology and neuroscience department at Duke, and I knew sort of early on that I didn't want to do a, um, I don't want to go the traditional tenure track academic route, which is what we're really trained for in my program. So I was really seeking out these sorts of opportunities and more applied research, um, because that's one of the things that, about what I do at Duke that I don't always love is how it never ends up being applied. So. I was really searching for these sorts of opportunities, and when I found it, I was just so thankful that Colleen gave me a chance. Um, and, and, and tell them how you found it. Because um, so, you came to a slightly different. Yeah, so I just, <laughs> one of my friends was a paid contractor with Wake County and told me um, that sometimes they do these summer internships. So I just cold emailed uh, Colleen and Nancy. Um, luckily, they took me in. Um, but there's so many people like me, I think, who are looking for these types of opportunities who have decided they don't want to go the tenure track professorship route. They want to do more applied work, um, and we're really eager to help out, and we can be a resource for your LEA. Um, my motivation was a slightly different. I was approached in the summer by my advisor who um, let me know that there would be an opening at Guilford County Schools and that they would really like someone strong in data. And so I'm um, his advisee. He said, well, why don't you go there? Um, one of our former students was leaving, and she said this would, he said this would be great for you to go, considering what I was doing over the summer, which was interning at ETS. So I figured if I work at a school district, one, I'm going to get all this applied experience. Two, I'm going to get it at a local level before I ever attempt to think that I could work at a place like ETS where I would do it at a national level. So for me, it's just kind of getting my foot in the door for what I would hopefully like to do in the future. So you guys have already um, started to talk a little bit about the benefits of being in an embedded internship. Uh, I want you to further describe that as opposed to um, doing just strictly external research. One of the first things I thought about being in something is being engrossed in it. Um, in our program, we always talk about the school districts and what they do, but it's just outside. We have to look in or we have to know someone who's already there, and so you get a lot of secondhand information and it changes. Um, but being there, being in it is wildly different. So I'm working with people that I don't get to work with every day, so like assessment teams and executive directors, um, you know, content experts. These are all things I learned about in class. I just never see it in real life, kind of, sort of. Um, so it's good just to get to be around those people to pick their brains to ask them questions um, and so you could go back to school and say hey remember that time we talked about what content experts do well now i really know what they do because i work with them i think for me it was really eye-opening about the amount of data that is collected i mean Obviously, everyone knows about like the EOGs and things, but there's like surveys that they ask of teachers, there's surveys they ask of students, and so it really opened my eyes to, instead of always thinking when I wanted to do research that I had to generate um, a document or something that maybe starting first with what the district already collects and seeing how I could leverage that um, to meet my research goals was one of the best experiences. Other benefits? Another benefit that I would say is, um, I think similar to what you were saying, Anita, is um, working with program staff and school staff to develop logic models. And um, I remember initially meeting with Colleen, and we would go and talk to the program staff and develop that theory of action for what letter land is. Um, I had experience developing logic models myself um, in class, but to really find out what the needs are. Um, and what the outcomes are that the program staff are interested in. That was something that I thought was a benefit of being embedded. Um, and then also what Kirsten said, learning about the data and just going to staff meetings and being on the list listservs with um, the emails and seeing the emails about the different data sets that are available within the district. That's, that's a huge benefit. 
I get actually think of one more calling. Um, another benefit is I'm I would pretty much consider myself a literacy person, so it's <coughs> great that I'm on the um, the letter land evaluation. But also by by being um, being there, I've also been exposed to other opportunities to analyze data that is outside the realm of literacy. So I feel like I'm becoming also more knowledgeable about other aspects to strengthen my, my skills as a researcher and evaluator. Do we, did you want to continue? I, I would add that it's nice um, when you're part of the organization. I think it's actually less difficult personally to give any sort of bad news. You know, like this isn't working the way we, you wanted it to or you <laughs> thought it was. Because you're all on the same team, like you're part of the same organization. So it's more familiar, whereas, you know, another product evaluation that I'm working on, um, which is more external, um, like, it's going to be a little difficult, I think, to deliver some of that news, um, but it wasn't as difficult as being a part of the organization that you're evaluating. And I'm, I'm just going to add even um, just my two cents in the fact the benefits to the districts. Just to say that um, we've had um, whether it was uh, faculty approaching us um, with, with a recommendation or um, Julie who came to us um, kind of uh, just at, through an interview process, um, we've had extraordinarily strong um, support at the district. So for districts who are considering having interns, I would highly recommend um, going forward with that. And we do, we're, we are looking for um, doctoral students who have uh, already gone through their qualitative, quantitative, you know, their methods, uh, courses, their research courses, so that they're they're ready for the application. And the experience that we're offering them is um, at the professional level. So the next thing I wanted to um, ask you about is, as we've talked about the pros, uh, what are some of the challenges? And I know um, Judy earlier in one of the morning panels described it to some of the challenges that her interns face. I want you guys to speak to the challenges that you faced um, working within a school district. So I have a, a recent one, I guess. Um, and it's the second time I've learned this, but in a separate field. So I learned this once in psychology, and then I've learned it here again. Um, <laughs> when you're in class, and you're getting good grades, and your advisors like are telling you how great you are, you think you're a rock star until you come into real life and do what you did in class. Um, and so Judy, we have, we've got these emails where I've shown her you know, some work or whatever, and she says it's great, and like maybe there was something I missed and I didn't see it, and the response is, well, these are things you'll know once you've been here for a while. And it just brings you back down to earth a little bit, like, yeah, I'm pretty great and I could do some good things, but there's always still a lot to learn, and you just have to know, um, you just have to be aware of it, that coming out of coursework or whatever, um, when you get into real life situations, you know, there are things you're gonna be, that you're gonna miss, um, and you don't necessarily feel like that when you start, but those are things that you learn. So hearing the messages, these are things you'll get, you know, once you're here for a while, are refreshing to me, like, okay, yes, I need to be reminded of that sometimes. So it's, maybe it's not a con, or if it is, it's one that I can appreciate. And I think that's the purpose of it. I would say one of the challenges I've encountered is that the data is not always clean. <laughs> and, and I, so, She's being kind. <laughs> so um, the project I was working on, I needed a flat file, but the, the file was not. <laughs> and I, I was like, help. <laughs> So um, Colleen had to, you know, walk me through, and she had to show me her her awesome SAS skills. But all I remember is just hit the running man. But <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that was like a little lesson learned, kind of that application that in in class and in coursework, or sometimes if you've already you know gone through the external process and you ask for the data, it comes to you at least flat or in a usable format. So to to go more to the raw and try to get it manipulated. So it's a, a good thing for me is learning, but also I think one of the challenges. Yeah, the data tasks that I thought would take an hour sometimes took four or five hours for a day. That's just a fast. <laughs> and so figuring out when to go for help and when to kind of struggle through it. Um, Colleen did, I mean, 
Colleen's an excellent mentor. There was strong mentoring. Um, and there was also this, this space of where it was okay to fail. And um, that was seen as a learning experience. So having a growth mindset towards, um, towards the data struggles that I experienced, that helped. Because that, that is, that is um, a struggle that I think. Can I add one more? Yeah, of course. Oh, well, yeah, I would just say, yeah, I definitely learned, like, you need to have flexibility um, when you're working on a project. Uh, what happened with us, it was a little bit of a struggle, was that we just realized that the data was very incomplete, um, just we didn't have the Brisbane rosters for, like, half the schools for the ALCs. So we had to switch gears and turn sort of away from doing an outcomes evaluation because we didn't have the, the students, um, and towards the implementation evaluation, which we did have very strong implementation data. So that was... A learning experience for me is that you know data is not going to be perfect outside of when you're running a study in your own lab. Um, going back to data, I live in data because that's what I do on a daily basis. Um, having the data go through different hands before it gets to you is something uh, I haven't experienced like a lot of yet uh, at the school district, but I've dealt with a lot this summer because as a student, you're the person who does it all. You collect the data, you analyze it. You uh, write the report so you know it in and out. And it's just really difficult sometimes when you get it from someone else or another department, let's say, and they just tackle things a little differently than you. So by the time it gets to you, you're not sure what changes have been made to it um, or how you need it or how you need to get it to a format that's usable for you. Um, and that takes a little getting used to when, when you're not the only one doing it and you get into like school districts, you're not the only one. There are different departments. And, something to get used to. And one other, um, I'm not sure if this is necessarily a challenge, but something that um, I learned and I didn't expect. Um, is well, let's get into our next question, so go okay. ahead. Okay, well, the number of groups that results, especially with Letterland, the number of people that the results had to be um, communicated to, that was, I was used to doing conference presentations and writing papers for scholarly audience, um, an academic audience, but um, we also had, we had like five different presentations, one for meeting with directors, one for meeting with program staff, one for meeting with central office staff, one for conferences, and so that was something that um, was, was really eye-opening for me, um, that it's the same project, but you know, how we communicate it really matters for different audiences. So, yeah, so any other surprises um, that you guys encountered along the way during your internship experience? Uh, well, one surprise for me was just, you think the easy part of program, program evaluation is gonna be just getting to know the program and knowing history and the purpose and the goals <laughs> of the program, but actually that can be the hardest part because, you know, I think the goals change, um, purpose, if you ask different people, they'll tell you there's different purposes to uh, the same program. People move on to different jobs who maybe started the program and they're no longer accessible. Um, so that was a learning experience for me, is actually just figuring out what is this program. <laughs> <laughs> what is it we're evaluating? Step yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and Julie, can you just speak just a little bit about what um, you mentioned, the um, surprise that the data wasn't where, where we needed it to be. Uh, talk a little bit about what we did um, after that with the information. Yeah, so um, that's actually another cool thing about um, being, you know, an internal researcher is that then you can work with the, the staff on the program to make improvements going forward. So we had meetings with them to just let them know that uh, participant documentation is really important and it is a goal that needs to be stressed to the teachers because we can't really do the evaluation at the end of the day if we don't get um, those, those participant rosters. So. Um, that was a really rewarding part of the internship, actually, was getting to just communicate with lots of different groups of people and work together to make things better going forward, feeling like you're, you're, you're making progress. Um, yeah, I would say that that's another. Um, it surprised me how fulfilling and rewarding it was to go to different groups of people and share and, and see how immediately meaningful those results were and how it's going to inform what they did in the future. So, I mean, that, that really changed kind of the trajectory that I wanted to go in my career because I saw the impact that it had almost immediately um, with 
program staff and its school staff. So. So there's a wealth of research out there about administrative internships, and we've got quite a history of um, those as leadership training grounds. But with our, our new research um, internship, what are your hopes for that? I really just hope that more LEAs and research centers and districts uh, just do them and realize that there are lots of us out there who are looking for these experiences um, while we're graduate students uh, and you don't even have to pay us sometimes which sometimes <laughs> we have funding already so uh, we really can be a resource to you and you know you can delegate to us uh, like you, know, you there you need to do mentorship but you, we can still be a resource to you and, and save you time and also it's very beneficial for us as well I would echo what Julie said. I, I feel even if you want to go the tenure track route, being placed in an, an internship within a school district, I think, speaks to some of the what the other panels were saying about how do you work on collaboration, communication, because you're now in within the district. You're seeing how all the different parts work. Um, and some of the other things, like Beth had mentioned, having um, these hands-on, messy experiences that complement some of your other coursework, I think in the end of the day, you're going to be a better researcher, evaluator, in whether you're, like I said, if you're wanting to go to the university or you're wanting to go in the school district or any of the other um, opportunities that are available, I think it's a, it's a good experience. And it, it gives a chance, it gives the student a chance to be more well-rounded and I get that a lot for myself because I came in knowing that I we have three tracks in my program psychometric statistics and evaluation and I am definitely on the psychometrics track um, but that doesn't mean that I haven't worked in evaluation at previous assistantships or even now at the school district because there are many different departments at the district so you could be thrown into a an assessment team and then you work with an assessment um, you know project or something something you've never done before or you get thrown into an evaluation, something you've also never done before. So if you spend, you know, the length of your internship, nine months or, you know, a whole school year, calendar year, then you leave with all these different experiences in these different areas. And some of them you probably wouldn't have chosen for yourself, but now you've just had these skills in them. And of course, we're grasping with server, they go to our CV. And the more you put on your CV, the better you look. So. So within the other, like the more medical fields, um, we have kind of lab, you know, they go and they do their internships and it's kind of more like lab work. Do you guys see the school district as a learning lab or? So I am also a graduate research, um, on a graduate research assistantship um, doing an evaluation of the um, STEM focused teacher preparation program at NC State. And so I see that as kind of a lab setting too. Um, I think that working in the, having an internship in the school district is a lab setting that has a lot of overlap with what I'm doing at NC State. But the way that I think that it's different is the pace um, and the timeliness of what was mentioned earlier about the results, looking at data from that school year. Um, I think that things just move more quickly. Uh, within uh, a school district and so that's something that I'm very goal-oriented so I, I like that. Um, that that's that's something that I see as a unique feature I think lab experiences a lot of time can be very insular and contained it's like we bring participants into the lab and then we run them and then we analyze the data and then but this is a much more dynamic experience you're working with lots of different people with lots of different goals um, it, it's more applied than, I, than my lab is, and so for me, it's, it's more rewarding than a lab experience. Yeah, I was trying to make distinctions in my mind, and I, I think as far as comparing our experience to, to what could happen in the medical field, I would consider what we do more residency where it's real life, there's no like do-over, like, like the things that we do like have immediate impact on, you know, so it, it um, so, so yeah, it's, it's 
really. So how do you um, think the, or has it, your experiences within the district affected your research interests? So as far as your dissertation topics are concerned. Uh, I was fortunate to have my dissertation topic selected uh, and gone through review this summer when I was at ETS. And so what I think working at the school district now is, I was talking to Judy earlier, is um, later in the year they get to see their main data that has been, um, it's a DBA, so it's digitally based, so it's on the computer now, first year. I got to look at the pilot data of that this summer. So I was telling Judy, you know, when that comes out, if I'm still around, like if it runs the course of my citizenship, then um, the school, not the schools, the skills that I'll have to learn to do my dissertation, I can readily apply or at least show you so that when you get this new DBA data, you'll know how to use all of the extra information that comes with it. Um, so it just kind of lined up easily for me and that this didn't help me select a dissertation type or anything like that, but because I had already selected it and then I got placed here, luckily, but those are um, tools and skills I can share with my supervisor so that they can go out and do those cool things when they get the data for the first time. Um, and that's not something that would have happened if I didn't get placed here directly after the summer, so. Thanks. And so I was able to kind of blend what I was doing at NC State with um, Wake County Public School System in that um, my citizenship is in STEM education. And then at Wake County, what I decided to go ahead and move forward with um, my dissertation is an evaluation of the North Carolina STEM initiative in middle schools. So I'm using instrumental variable analysis to look at um, cognitive and non-cognitive outcomes of students in those middle schools at grade eight. So um, that was a nice way kind of blend both of my experiences um, because I, I did really want, want to work with Wake County for my dissertation and do something that mattered for them. Yeah, I mean, I already had my, I already proposed my dissertation before coming for the internship, um, so it didn't affect that, but it has definitely, I don't know if this is the next question, but it has definitely affected my um, confidence in my career interests um, moving forward. But maybe I won't. <laughs> It's okay. We can, we can bleed over a little bit. That is going to be the last question, though, in terms of, so if you want to speak to it now, that's fine, in terms of ex your um, career goals. Yeah, I mean, I just, I would love to work in a uh, research and evaluation office for a, a school district. That would be a really ideal um, job for me. Um, I, I really like how it's a community and people are, people really at Wake County at least help each other out on their data. So you never feel like you're alone, which is something that maybe is a little more com common in academia, um, but you really you feel like you're confident in what you put out there because everyone's working together and giving you feedback. So I really like that aspect of the job. So, um, so this internship has influenced my dissertation proposal. I am um, I'm supposed to be, I guess, making my official proposal this semester, so I can't say it's been fully accepted yet, but um, I would like to do a mixed methods design and, and for the case study that I'd like to do for the, the second part of my mixing, I would like to incorporate some of the Wake County already collected data to support um, my analysis. So I definitely see that I've been able to blend my professional work experiences as well as this internship to inform what I'd like to do for my dissertation. And I would also like to piggyback off what Julie said and say yes, that um, this experience has opened my eyes to um, what it would be like to work in a district in their research and accountability, and I would be open to exploring more of those opportunities in the future. What about um, Beth or Winnie? Do you want to speak to your career goals in terms of how your internship may have affected those? Yeah, so uh, I still have a little more time for my career goals, but one thing that I've been thinking about is being placed in the school district. Um, I said it has allowed me to work with different people, and for example, now I found out about um, the Strategic Data Project Fellowship that Nikisha is doing right now. That's something I never heard of before, 
um, and working with her now, I know that that's another opportunity that I have when I finish coursework. So if I don't want to go, you know, straight into the industry, for example, um, then this may be something that's useful to me uh, so I can get more experience working in education or in the field um, or applying those things to the field before I, you know, go somewhere else or something like that. So, um, yeah, having those type of opportunities have just given me more options about what I'd like my future to be. Yeah, and I think that I always knew that as a former teacher, former fourth grade teacher, I think that I always knew that I wanted to work with a school system, but I started graduate school in 2010, um, and I think that it can kind of change things, and um, I think that this experience that I had back in 2014, currently, um, has kind of reminded me of what it is that I really want to do. And so I am looking for jobs. My husband just got a job in Dallas, Fort Worth, so I'm looking for jobs in the Dallas-Fort Worth area with school systems. Um, if anyone knows anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good networking, Beth. <laughs> so, yes, we're, we've um, been thrilled to have, like I said, the top-notch graduate students. And so, before I open it up to um, Q&A, I just wanted to um, just tell you a little bit about some of the logistical things. So, in case uh, there are district folks or faculty who are um, thinking of uh, recommending folks. Um, we we um, have been doing about one or two interns a semester. Uh, this summer we had four, which was, I felt very intern rich, and I thought that could either explode on us <laughs> or go very well. And thank God it went very well. <laughs> we got a ton of work done thanks to um, the additional support. And like I said, uh, these folks are working at the same level, um, administrative level, of that my position is. Um, I mentor them and uh, don't expect them to uh, swim independently, but um, they are doing the same level work. So the experiences that they're having are real world of what they will be um, expected to do if they are in a district. And if they do end up in a faculty position, um, they will have had this in their back pocket so that they are better able to work, whether it's collaborating on a grant or um, how, however they're working as an external research request, they'll have a better understanding of that process and be able to, in fact, they've come to a couple of our external research um, meetings so that they can see that whole process and have that kind of inside track. So.